I am Dr. Asma Winterziz, working as a research scientist of the Epidemiology Public Health Impact Unit of IVI. I am a proud Bangladeshi. Beginning in the early 2000s, Bangladesh hosted IVI's surveillance studies, which helped capture significant burdens of cholera, Japanese encephalitis, and shigella in South Asia. With the full membership of Bangladesh, IVI looks forward to further collaborations to advance vaccine solutions for urgent global public health challenges. And now, the ratification ceremony will begin with the welcome remarks from Mr. George Bickerstaff, Chairman of the IVI Board of Trustees. Hello, my name is George Bickerstaff. I'm the chairperson of IVI Board of Trustees. Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Zaid Malik. Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Zaire Alum. Ambassador Ibida Islam. Your Excellencies and Distinguished Guests. As Chairperson of the IVI Board of Trustees, it's my pleasure and honor to welcome you to IVI to celebrate the ratification of the IVI Establishment Agreement by the People's Republic of Bangladesh and highlight the enduring accomplishments of Bangladesh IVI collaboration. Thank you for joining us today. Bangladesh was one of the first signatory of IVI's establishment agreement, the 1996 UN Treaty that established IVI as an independent international organization dedicated to vaccine research and development and strengthening vaccine technology capacity in developing countries. The IVI agreement remains open for ascension by any state or intergovernmental organization. IVI welcomes the government of Bangladesh's ratification for full membership as a state party, which was completed on April 5th of this year. IVI's partnership with its member states particularly the governments of Korea, Sweden, India, and Finland, who provide core funding to IVI, enable the continuing and accelerating significant strides for global health, including the development and delivery of the world's first affordable oral cholera vaccine, as well as preclinical and clinical development of a number of COVID-19 vaccine candidates. Importantly, IVI's research and capacity building collaborations with partners in Bangladesh for the past 20 years are, are exemplary cases of IVI's work with other member states to advance and make available safe, effective, and affordable vaccines where they're needed most. Over the years, IVI has partnered with ICDDRB, a doc-based international health research institute and the Incepta Vaccine LTD, a GMP compliant Bangladeshi vaccine manufacturer for the development of oral cholera vaccine. IVI and ICDDRB supported Incepta in conducting safety and immunogenicity clinical studies in Dhaka. And in January 2020, Incepta's Colovax oral cholera vaccine was licensed for national use in Bangladesh. We raised the flag of Bangladesh as IVI as a state party. I wish for all of us to reflect on the inspiring potential of furthering our cooperation. A vision of a world free of suffering from infectious disease must be a collective investment and effort. And we're proud to stand with our 36 member states and the World Health Organization to make this vision a lived reality for the world's most vulnerable people. With Bangladesh's full membership, IVI looks forward to further collaborations across clinical development, epidemiology, and technology transfer to advance vaccine solutions for urgent global public health challenges. On behalf of everyone at IVI, our member states, and our collaborators around the world, I welcome Bangladesh's full membership and look forward to the future impact we'll certainly achieve together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bickerstaff. Now, His Excellency Jahid Malik, the Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare of Bangladesh, 
will deliver his valuable remarks. Your Excellency, Jerome Kim, Director General of International Vaccine Institute. Your Excellency, Mr. George Bikarsta, Chairperson of IBI Board of Trustees. Your Excellency, State Minister, and distinguished guests and gentlemen. On behalf of the Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, I would like to extend my sincere thanks and gratitude to the Director General of International Vaccine Institute for hosting this ceremony. On 20th October 1996, Bangladesh was among the first countries to become a signatory of the International Vaccine Institute's Establishment Agreement. And from its inception, IBI played an active role in Bangladesh. I would like to thank IBI for the two decades of assistance to Bangladesh. IBI has helped improve our understanding of the disease burdens caused by cholera, Shigila, Japanese encephalitis, and antimicrobial resistance in Bangladesh. IBI also trained a large number of Bangladeshi researchers and medical professionals and transferred the technology for its oral corona vaccine to Bangladesh, where it is manufactured for domestic use by Incepta. Today, Bangladesh's ratification of the IBI establishment agreement and our new role as a state party signify our appreciation for IBI's previous contributions to Bangladesh and our country's desire to expand cooperation with IBI. Bangladesh sees two benefits from membership in IBI. First, IBI will continue to help Bangladesh with capacity building and disease surveillance. This cooperation with IBI will help protect the health and well-being of our people from infectious disease and improve the capacities of our researchers and healthcare workers. Secondly, through IBI's unique product development partnership with advanced vaccine development through South-South and Triangular Corporation, IBI can assist the development of Bangladesh's domestic vaccine, R&D, and vaccine manufacturing industry. Through this cooperation, Bangladesh will be able to offer its domestically produced vaccines to the global market and share its vaccine development expertise with other countries, which will contribute to Bangladesh's continuing economic growth. Bangladesh, in turn, will support and facilitate IV, IVI's work and contribute to our shared vision of a world free of infectious disease. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister Jahid Malik. At this time, we would like to invite the Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Bangladesh, his Excellency, Mr. M.D. Shahrir Alam, MP, to deliver his remarks. His Excellency, Mr. Jahid Malik, MP, Honorable Minister, Minister of Health and Family Welfare of People's Republic of Bangladesh, Ms. Abida Islam, our Ambassador to the Republic of Korea, Mr. Jeff Bickel Staff, Chairperson of IVI Board of Trustee, Mr. Jeremy Kim, Director General of IVI, Excellency Ambassadors and IVI Signatory Countries, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all from Bangladesh. I am absolutely delighted to pre be present here this evening, though virtually, on the occasion of the Bangladesh IVI ratification ceremony. It is indeed an auspicious moment for Bangladesh, completing the full accession process to IVI and becoming its 19th state party. This year, Bangladesh is celebrating the 50th anniversary of our independence. And at the same time, we are celebrating the 100th birth, birth anniversary of our founding father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. The formal accession of Bangladesh to the IVI has indeed added a new dimension 
to the celebration of these two important events of Bangladesh. In this regard, I would like to extend our thanks and gratitude to the IVI for supporting and facilitating the accession process of Bangladesh to the IVI. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, at present we are now living in a critical times when the whole world is challenged by the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has led to a dramatic loss of precious human lives worldwide and presents an unprecedented challenge to public health and socio-economic structure. Other than COVID-19, the whole world has previously seen the outbreaks of the virus-borne diseases and may encounter unprecedented virus-borne diseases in the future. In this regard, vaccine development and vaccine collaboration and concerted global action are crucial and effective to bolster our fight against these type of pandemics and to protect the human life and livelihoods. Bangladesh is among the first countries to sign the IVI establishment agreement way back 28 October 1996. Since then, Bangladesh and IVI have been cooperating closely in the areas of vaccine research and development vaccine technology transfer, research and capacity building collaboration. It is particularly mentionable that for the last 20 years, the IVI has been providing assistance to the fight against the disease burden caused by cholera shingala, Japanese encephalitis and antimicrobial resistance in Bangladesh by improving the vaccine capacity and transferring technology for its oral cholera vaccine to Bangladesh. I would like to extend our sincere thanks and gratitude to the IVI for all their invaluable assistances provided to Bangladesh so far. And I hope that our new role as a state party in the IVI would expand and consolidate cooperation with the IVI in the days ahead. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the pharmaceutical industry is one of the most developed technology sector which covers 98% of the country's total demand for medicine in the country. In addition to meeting the domestic demand, it also exports medicines to several countries of the world. Bangladesh is now producing quarantine products like PPE, masks, gloves, ventilators, the generic version of Remdesivir and exporting such items to the developed as well as developing nations on G2G basis. We hope that through this cooperation, Bangladesh may get the opportunity to offer its domestically produced vaccines to the global market and share its vaccines development ex expertise with other countries, which will contribute to Bangladesh's continuing economic growth. We also hope that through IVI's unique product development partnership, the IVI will assist the development of Bangladesh's domestic vaccine research and development and vaccine manufacturing industry. Moreover, with Bangladesh's full membership, we look forward to continuation of assistance and further collaboration in capacity building, disease surveillance and technology transfer to advance vaccine solution for urgent global public health challenges. We hope that such collaboration will help protect the health and well-being of our people from infectious diseases and improve the capacities of our researcher and healthcare workers. In closing, let me once again express our sincere thanks and gratitude to the IVI for its invaluable support towards Bangladesh's accession to the IVI and towards the improvement of public health management in Bangladesh. I thank you all. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabandhu. Thank you, Honorable Minister Shahriyal Arlum. Now it is time to invite Her Excellency Abida Islam, Ambassador of Bangladesh to the Republic of Korea, to deliver her valuable remarks. Excellencies, Ambassadors and members of diplomatic corps from the IVI signatory countries, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. It is my great honor to be present on this August occasion that recognizes Bangladesh's accessions to IVI as one of its state parties completed in May this year, which is indeed an auspicious moment. We are greatly honored and thankful to His Excellency, Mr. Jahid Malik, Honorable Minister of Health and Family Affairs, Family Welfare of the Government of Bangladesh, and His Excellency, Mr. Mohammad Shahriyal Alum MP, Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Government of Bangladesh, for sending their commemorative video messages on this occasion. We are also grateful for the virtual presence of Mr. George Bickerstaff, 
Chairperson of IVI Board of Trustees. Hence, I express our sincere thanks to Director General Mr. Jeremy Kim for his leadership in guiding us in fulfilling all the requirements for the accession process and also for arranging this wonderful ceremony this afternoon to mark this occasion. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this important development is taking place at a time when the whole world is suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic and especially Bangladesh, which is also going through the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, I'm delighted that this accession is taking place at the same year when Bangladesh is celebrating the golden jubilee of its independence as well as Mujibir. Therefore, Bangladesh's full accession to the IVI has indeed made this year even more remarkable for us. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we laud the active and constructive role of the IVI in technology transfer, especially exchanging the technical know-how for vaccines of a number of communicable diseases and also for the capacity building of Bangladeshi medical professionals and researchers for the past three decades since we become a signatory country. With Bangladesh's full membership in IVI, I believe it will further consolidate it our relationship in protecting public health from communicable diseases through enhanced research, clinical development, and manufacturing of affordable vaccine in Bangladesh. And thus, this partnership will further enhance the capabilities of a robust pharmaceutical sector and assist Bangladesh to contribute to the greater good of humankind globally. As a state party of IVI, Bangladesh is committed to supporting IVS work in its endeavors to make the world a even healthier and a safer place. With this word, I conclude. Once again, I take this opportunity to express our sincere thanks to the IVI for supporting and facilitating Bangladesh's accession to the IVI. Thank you all. Kamsamnida. Thank you, Honorable Ambassador Abida Islam, ma'am, for her excellent speech. Now we turn to Mr. Abdul Muqtadir, Chairman and Managing Director of Incepta Vaccine Limited, to deliver his remarks. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, we are very thankful to our Honorable Minister of Health for his factual presence, and also we are very thankful to the State Minister for State Minister for Foreign Affairs for being present in this particular uh, event. The relationship of Incepta Pharmaceuticals, Incepta uh, vaccine uh, with IVI is very special. And I must thank the IVI management for providing all the support for the development of Incepta vaccine and its success in launching uh, cholera vaccine in Bangladesh. I must say and recognize the wonderful uh, leadership of Professor Jerome Kim for the recent development of IVI in New Heights. We see tremendous amount of development in IVI and we see the hope that IVI could bring to the vaccine industry in Bangladesh, for the development of the vaccine industry in Bangladesh. We are also particularly very lucky to have a wonderful organization like ICDDRB. And I must congratulate ICDDRB for their all the support that they have given to us, along with uh, IVI for the development of our organizational capacity, capacity, development of our professional development of our uh, scientists. Because of these efforts, we were able to not only successfully able to launch cholera vaccine, but we have developed uh, meningococcal vaccine, we have developed hepatitis B vaccine, we, are, we have developed uh, typhoid vaccine, we have developed HPV vaccine, and many other vaccines are in the, pro uh, in the development line. So we would be able to manufacture all these vaccines from the cellular level and would be able to launch them. And this was only possible because of the guidance, because of the technology, because of the 
overall uh, supervision given by IVI on a day-to-day -day basis, starting from uh, 2013 uh, until now. We have now joined IVI uh, uh, in further developing uh, the human resources in uh, vaccinology. And I would urge our honorable health minister uh, to, to come forward also by providing institutional support to Bangladeshi industries, uh, which he is currently developing for molecular biology and other biological products. So, so I think IVI can involve more with Bangladesh Health Ministry uh, for the development of vaccines in Bangladesh. And we are very lucky to have ICDDRB, particularly in Dhaka. So if we are going to have a collaboration between IVI, vaccine industries in Bangladesh, and ICDDRB, then many exciting vaccines can be developed from Bangladesh with the support of these two wonderful organizations. Uh, I would say that uh, I, I am also grateful to Professor Zirom, uh, Director General of IVI, for a recent development in a cutting edge um, COVID vaccine, uh, and which we are going to start very soon, especially mRNA vaccine. And there, uh, he's going to give us support. We are also working with them in development of a protein subunit vaccine, where they are going to provide us full support on clinical development. So I hope that with the support of IVI and ICDDRB, we would be able to provide high quality vaccines, not only for all other communicable diseases or infectious diseases, but also um, a, a very high quality vaccine for COVID in the uh, next few months to come. And I thank uh, the authorities of Bangladesh government for ratification. And uh, I congratulate both IVI and Bangladesh government for making this particular arrangement um, so where we could join. And it is our uh, great privilege to be able to work with IVI. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chairman Abdul Muqtadir. And now, Dr. Tahmid Ahmed, Executive Director of ICDDRB, will deliver his remarks. Distinguished Chairperson, Mr. Speaker Staff, Honorable Minister for Health and Family Welfare of the Government of Bangladesh, Mr. Zahid Malik, MP, Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Government of Bangladesh, Mr. Muhammad Shahriyar Alam, Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Bangladesh to the Republic of Korea, Ms. Abida Islam, the pharmaceutical pioneer in Bangladesh, Mr. Ghulam Muktadir, distinguished guests. A very good day to all of you and Salaam Alaikum. On this auspicious day, first of all, I would like to point out and remind you of the huge contribution that Bangladesh made to global public health. And that was, you know, about 40 years ago with the huge, you know, seminal research that was done at ICDDRB in Bangladesh that led to the development of oral rehydration salt solution, ORS. And you know that today, the advent of ORS has saved the lives of 70 million lives. Huge accomplishment. There is none scientific discovery that has been able to save so many lives so far. And that was done, most of it was done in Bangladesh. So I would say that that is a gift from Bangladesh, from ICDDRP to the rest of the world. After we have, you know, achieved a lot in the control of diarrheal diseases, we then started our fight against the vaccine preventable diseases and then started our partnership with IBI. And this has been a tremendous partnership. First of all, we started to work with the DOMI program 
the diseases of the impoverished started by the IVI. And then we have this oral cholera vaccine. My predecessor, Dr. John Clemens, he actually pioneered the research in Bangladesh on the development of the oral cholera vaccine. And today we have this very wonderful vaccine implemented among the Rohingya uh, 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 forcibly displaced Myanmar nationals in the south of Bangladesh and also elsewhere in different parts of the world. And what a wonderful you know, uh, partnership, friendship this has been between ICDDRP, the IVI, and the pharmaceutical uh, industry, notably uh, Incepta, led by Mr. Muktadi. Not just the oral cholera vaccine, we are uh, collaborating with the IVI, and I can talk about the data analysis that we are undertaking every day on a collaborative basis. And we also have further collaboration. As Mr. Muktadir has very rightly pointed out, so this is a partnership that can bring in wonders, you know, also to the fight against COVID. Today, I recall again that Bangladesh is one of the few countries that have stepped up the fight against COVID-19 through the purchase and the procurement of the vaccines against this dreadful disease. Like many in the country, I myself am a beneficiary of the efforts that have been spearheaded by the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, as well as by our Honorable Minister of Health, Mr. Zahid Malik, and we are very much indebted to them. And today, I want to assure you, distinguished audience, that ICDDRB will work with the government of Bangladesh, with the IVI, with the pharmaceutical industry, with INSEPTA in stepping up the fight against vaccine preventable diseases. And with these few words, again, I would like to congratulate you. I would like to thank you for, you know, organizing this event and for inviting all of us to say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Tahmid, for your excellent speech. I really feel a privilege that I had worked with ICDDRB for eight years and now I am working with IVI. Now, we would like to give the opportunity for IVI's member state representatives to deliver their congratulatory remarks. First, I would now like to introduce Mr. Chang Ugzin, Director General of the International Organizations Bureau of Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Republic of Korea. Korea is the host country of IVI. Director General Chang will now deliver his remarks. His Excellency Zaid Malek, Minister of Health and Family Welfare of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Mr. George B. Kostep, Chairperson of IBI Board of Trustees. Mr. Jerome Kim, Director General of the International Vaccine Institute. Excellencies, distinguished guests. It is a great pleasure for the Korean government to be part of today's ceremony celebrating the ratification of the IVI Establishment Agreement by the People's Republic of Bangladesh, which has continued to play an important part in the international health scene, for example, through its active support for ICDDRB. The Republic of Korea cordially welcomes Bangladesh for joining IVI and its parties on the path toward realizing IVI's valuable vision, which is developing countries free of suffering from infectious disease. As a faithful partner of IVI and home to its headquarters, the Republic of Korea has walked together with IVI through its highs and lows ever since its establishment in 1997. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, the Korean government has made tremendous efforts to increase the visibility of IVI and has actively invited more countries to join through various bilateral and multilateral occasions. In particular, President Moon Jae-in, 
himself has expressed the Republic of Korea's unwavering support for IVI through multiple international fora, including the 75th UN General Assembly last year and the Davos Agenda Week 2021 of World Economic Forum. It is therefore quite meaningful for Korea to witness the growth of IVI as it continues to expand and solidify its membership base globally, with Finland's accession last year and Bangladesh's ratification this year. Distinguished guests, at this critical moment when hundreds of millions of people are directly or indirectly suffering from the pandemic, it is crucial that the world unite in solidarity to tackle this common threat against humanity. In this regard, the mission of IVI, which is to discover, develop, and deliver effective and affordable uh, vaccines for global public health, is especially pertinent to the current situation. It is noteworthy that more countries have decided to join IVI in the recent years, as it demonstrates that such mission of IVI is gaining wider support across the globe, coming closer and closer to its achievement. I believe that IVI, as it has done so for the past 24 years, would continue to act as an international platform for the world to assemble the spirit of solidarity and global willingness to strengthen health cooperation, which are essential building blocks for our society to swiftly recover from the current crisis. Before I close, I'd like to reaffirm the Republic of Korea's full commitment and support to IVI and pledge to continue to work with all partners of IVI to achieve inclusive recovery that reaches people in marginalized regions as well. Moving forward, the Republic of Korea looks forward to collaborating with Bangladesh to create positive synergies together in our mutual support for more effective and constructive role of IVI in advancing global health cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Director General Chang Zook In. Now we invite Her Excellency Sripia Raghunathan, Ambassador of India to the Republic of Korea, to deliver her congratulatory remarks. India became a state party of IVI since 2012 and a state member since August 2017. Good afternoon, Dr. Jerome Kim, DG of the International Vaccine Institute. Uh, Her Excellency Mrs. Abida Islam, the Ambassador of Bangladesh to the Republic of Korea. Distinguished Korean and Bangladeshi dignitaries who are present here uh, virtually as well as in Seoul. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, Anyonga Shunnika, Namaste. <clears throat> I'm very honored to be part of this very special event being organized by IVI to mark the formal ratification by Bangladesh of the establishment agreement of, the, of, of its association with the IVI. I recall with great pleasure my last visit to the IVI in about a year ago when, the, uh, when Her Excellency, the First Lady of uh, the Republic of Korea had uh, uh, come to the IVI to be honored as the, uh, honorary, appointed as the honorary ambassador of this institution. Friends, I don't think I need to dwell on uh, India's own association with the IVI. It is of long standing and we have been uh, uh, a state party to its establishment <clears throat> back in 2007 and uh, and uh, and we were, and we did become the third state funder of the IVI back in 2017 since then the IVI and the indian health authorities have worked together on developing and testing vaccines to counter diseases like cholera japanese encephalitis dengue typhoid rotavirus and so on the IVI has rightfully earned applause and recognition from around the world for its role in the development and delivery of vaccines to tackle a whole range of diseases, including cholera and typhoid. It's been involved in all aspects of bringing vaccines to, uh, to uh, for active uh, reality, discovering new technologies for making vaccines, improving existing vaccines, developing promising vaccine candidates for licensing, and for WHO pre-qualification, 
transferring technology to manufacturers and partnering with manufacturers for clinical development, licensing and delivering vaccines in low-income countries. So there's a whole range of activities which IVI has been carrying out to make sure that vaccines are made available around the world. Today, as the world continues to grapple with the COVID-19 shock, the importance of the role that is being played by the IVI has become more and more apparent. I may add that India, as a responsible member of the international community, and one that is fortunate to have a fine vaccine manufacturing ecosystem and renowned companies, has played its part in ensuring that COVID-19 vaccines are made available to countries around the world. Our philosophy, and I believe this is one that is completely shared by the IVI and all its member countries, it remains that we are in this fight together and truly no one is safe until everyone is safe. It gives me immense pleasure to congratulate Bangladesh, which is not only India's neighbor, but a very dear friend for joining this fine institution. I also congratulate the IVI itself for bringing in this very, very important country formally into its fold. We in India look forward to working closely with Bangladesh within the ambit of the IVI as we are on many other fronts bilaterally. Thank you all so much for inviting me and for giving me your attention on this very happy occasion. Kamsam Nida, Dhanyavad, Namaste. Thank you, Ambassador Sripia Raghunathan. And now we turn to Ms. Gabriela Agarstan, Church the Affairs of Embassy of Sweden. She will deliver her congratulatory remarks. Sweden is a long-standing partner of IVI and has supported IVI since 2002 through SIDA. Good afternoon. I'm Gabriela Orgesson, Chargée d'Affaires at the Swedish Embassy here in Seoul. Sweden has enjoyed a long-standing relationship with IVI and was one of the first countries to ratify IVI establishment agreement. Over the years, IVI and SIDA, the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, have worked together as partners to fulfill our shared vision of a world free of suffering from infectious diseases. The objective of Swedish International Development Cooperation is to create better conditions for people living in poverty and under oppression. Sweden's development corporations is founded on the principle of aid and development effectiveness. We consider IBI as a strategic partner as we share the belief that it's particularly important to focus our efforts to deliver on the principle of leaving no one behind. We must focus on building back better and greener the 10 points outlined already in the political declaration adopted during the Sustainable Development Goals Summit stands particularly true today and serve as a roadmap to accelerate action and commitments now and in the years to come. Gender equality and promoting climate resilience are key elements in this effort, as is international cooperation aimed at promoting healthy lives and decreasing suffering from disease. Sweden stands firm in its support for the multilateral system. Global challenges cannot be undertaken in isolation, as seen in tackling the COVID-19 pandemic, which continues to overwhelm health system, particularly those in resource-limited settings. It is crucial for governments and aid agencies to support research and collaboration that enables low to middle income countries to prepare and respond to global health threats. To that end, Sweden would like to take this opportunity to congratulate our friend and partner Bangladesh on becoming a state party of IVI during its 50th anniversary year of independence. Since 1971, Sweden has been a development cooperation partner with Bangladesh especially in the health sector. Sweden are proud to have supported the development of the world's first affordable oral cholera vaccine, which is now manufactured in Bangladesh. 
we look forward to working with Bangladesh as a fellow state party of the IBI in advancing its mission to discover, develop, and deliver safe and affordable vaccines to end suffering from infectious diseases and promote global public health. Thank you, Ms. Gabriela Augustson. At this time, we invite Mr. Mika Ruotsalainen, Deputy Head of Mission of Embassy of Finland, to deliver his congratulatory remark. Finland became a state party and a state funder of IVI since 2020. Thank you very much for this opportunity to participate in the Bangladesh International Vaccine Institute Establishment Agreement Ratification Ceremony. It is my great honor to congratulate Bangladesh for the ratification of this valuable agreement. Finland wishes the best possible cooperation and collaboration between Bangladesh and the International Vaccine Institute. Finland and Bangladesh have very good and constructive relations. Finland has also worked with the government of Bangladesh on health security initiatives in the past years. It is valuable to pursue this cooperation now in the Interna International Vaccine Institute context. Health security is a global public good. Outbreaks of infectious diseases and health emergencies coupled with gaps in health system and cross-sectoral preparedness pose some of the greatest risks to sustainable development, global economy, as well as security. This in mind, I would like to thank the International Vaccine Institute for its valuable work in vaccine research and development. We consider it vital to support research initiatives and institutes that pursue efforts to respond to the public health needs in different countries. Development of effective and efficient vaccines against diseases is a key in eradication of poverty, in reduction of inequalities and in promotion of health of women and girls, fully in line with the global 2030 agenda. Development of vaccines requires time, resources and expertise. The speed and scale of COVID-19 vaccine development has been unprecedented. We are pleased to have seen the Institute taking part in this endeavor. The ACT Accelerator COVAX pillar is a unique multilateral effort to ensure global equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines. It is important that we build the future preparedness on these lessons. Finland and International Vaccine Institute have a long history of cooperation, for instance in international health security programs and in exchange of information. Several Finnish experts have been involved in the Institute's activities already over two decades and we pursue as a financial contributor. Finland joined the, the International Vaccine Institute activities as a member state rather recently. Our ratification actually took place only last summer in 2020. Today and now it is a great honor for me to welcome Bangladesh on board. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mika Rootslainen. Now, we would like to introduce IVA Director General Zerum Kim. Director Zanarel will deliver his presentation on IVI and IVI's collaboration with Bangladesh. Honorable Ministers, Her Excellency Abida Islam, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, uh, and, and welcome guests. I would like to welcome you to the IVI Bangladesh ratification ceremony today. This is a really remarkable and, and happy event. Um, working together with one of our oldest uh, friends, oldest signatories, um, and bringing them now uh, to the, through the process of ratification. But I have a difficult task. Um, I have five minutes and 21 slides. So I think I'm going to actually go through the slides relatively quickly and, and then um, revert to prepared comments that are actually not going to be um, very, very long or very detailed. IVI, and you've heard very many times, uh, restatements of our mission and vision. But really our value proposition is that IVI accelerates vaccine research and development for global health. You've seen the beautiful contribution of the people and government of Korea the institute itself located here, just outside Seoul National University. 
We have field programs now in over 28 countries throughout Asia, Africa, and Latin America, 23 nationalities, and a workforce of 183 uh, as of today. So this UNDP initiative, with 36 countries and WHO as members, with three members uh, awaiting uh, formal accession, um, is really a growing and vital part of the global health infrastructure and ecology. This is just an illustration of the many countries in which IVI has had programs and, and also the 28 programs that, that IVI has currently. This is our, uh, our strategy, which starts with sustainability, because something as important as the development of vaccines for global health, the, the development of unincentivized vaccines for global health, that is the vaccines that the big vaccine companies are not developing, is something that must be sustainable. In order, in order to do that, we must be relevant to our stakeholders, to the countries that fund IVI, Sweden, India, Korea, and uh, Finland. Uh, but we also have to have the capabilities and the partnerships that will enable us to be successful. And those partnerships include a very, very long collaboration. And, and um, you heard the executive director, um, Dr. Ahmed, uh, talk about how long IVI has worked with ICDDRB Initially on the Diseases of the Most Impoverished, a grant that was given in the year 2000 by Bill Gates Sr. Uh, through the development of oral cholera vaccine uh, and its uh, pre-qualification by Shanta, now part of Sanofi, and then the technology transfer of that vaccine to our partners at Incepta and the development of a vaccine and manufacture of a vaccine in Bangladesh that is now providing uh, oral cholera vaccine to, to a country that has a, a significant burden from that disease, and now moving on to the potential manufacture and development and testing of vaccines against uh, COVID-19. Again, a very pressing global health problem, all made possible by the commitment of Bangladesh and other countries uh, to the mission and vision of IVI. This gets to what IVI uh, really does. With our 36 members, we do have a vision of the reduction of the impact of infectious diseases and infectious disease illness, morbidity, and death, mortality, throughout the world. This through the use of vaccines, which we know will save lives, decrease disability-associated life years, yield healthier families, and improve economic growth. This is only possible through vaccines and vaccination programs, and IVI's strong collaboration with a number of different agencies around the world, including international organizations like the World Health Organization uh, and UNICEF, with philanthropic or, uh, with foundations and, and other non-governmental non organizations like Gavi, through work with uh, high quality vaccine manufacturers such as Incepta and others, and, and then uh, with funding from additional agencies like COICA, CEDA, DFID, and USAID to move forward the task of vaccinating people and proving that these vaccines which are developed and tested actually have a real world effect. And we see the parallel to this in COVID. We've gone through hundreds of thousands of people have volunteered to participate in trials to demonstrate that COVID vaccines are safe and efficacious. But what we really need now is real world evidence on how these vaccines actually impact the pandemic and work against variants that are now circulating around the world. This is IVI's mission. This is what we do. This is what we do well with our partner organizations, uh, including the organizations in Bangladesh, but partners around the world, in the United States, in South America, in Africa, Europe, and in Asia. IVI is different from many organizations. You see at the bottom, CEPI, Unitate, the Global Fund, and Gavi. We're different from those funders. IVI conducts activity, activity that generates vaccines in the laboratory, generates evidence around disease burden around the world, and then tests those vaccines in relevant populations, gets the vaccines approved by organizations like uh, the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety in, in, in Korea, the DCGI in India, and ultimately gets World Health Organization pre-qualification, which allows those vaccines, like the vaccines in COVAX, to be used and to be purchased by UN agencies and used for global health projects around the world. 
IVI works on a lot of different vaccines, not only cholera, although we do talk a lot about cholera. Uh, what you see in blue are the programs and vaccines that IVI does internally, um, and, and where IVI vaccines are being moved forward th from the laboratory through clinical testing, and finally into testing after approval. In addition, in yellow are the vaccines where IVI is, is complementing or, or working together with companies whose vaccines need to be tested, need to be approved, and need to be used in order to have an impact in global health. Using COVID as an example, you can see the large number of companies, and actually, um, Incepta is not on the list yet, um, but we're, we're sure that it will get there shortly, um, helping uh, companies in Korea, helping universities in Korea and around the world to test their products in animals, to test their products in, in human clinical trials, to move forward with building capacity in countries around the world to test these vaccines, and finally now, in collaboration with additional companies, beginning the very important work of, of being able to show that these vaccines have a real-world impact, are actually reducing hospitalization and death in the countries where the vaccines are deployed despite the presence of COVID-19 variants. This is just an example of how IVI works, and, and you heard many of these programs mentioned before, DOMI, the diseases of the most impoverished, CHOVI, which is the cholera vaccine initiative, which developed the oral cholera vaccine that was eventually transferred to uh, Incepta in 2014. Um, programs that are now using that vaccine um, in Mozambique, and now Mozambique and, and Nepal, and finally, additional programs funded by other organizations that look to ways to improve that vaccine, to improve the performance of the vaccine, to simplify the formulation, to make it cheaper, but keep it safe and effective. This is just an example of, of some of the vaccines IVI has worked on. The oral cholera vaccine is our first vaccine. At a total cost to the Gates Foundation of $28 million, there are three pre-qualified vaccines and the vaccine technology transferred and now manufactured uh, by Incepta. The typhoid conjugate vaccine, again, um, the actual cost of the Gates Foundation will be lower than 33 million since I think we are underspending and will return 4 million to them unspent. Um, but SK and Biopharma are both um, in advanced testing of this vaccine. Actually, the SK vaccine has now been submitted for licensure to the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety. And finally, a third vaccine working on two new organisms, non-typhoidal salmonella and or shigella. Uh, some example of IVI programs uh, around the world, some of our uh, 160 partners, including partners from government, from universities, from industry, from philanthropy, and very importantly, partners in global health. So, COVID-19, uh, sorry, and, and this is just an example of, of some of the work that IVI has done, and I'm, in order to speed up a bit, I'm going to go and summarize it very quickly. We started with DOMI, which we've mentioned before, diseases of the most impoverished, which really established that there are diseases in um, low and middle income countries that are of substantial burden. And we had to establish that burden because in order to demonstrate to countries that these are important vaccines to have, we have to ensure that the countries understand that the diseases are relevant, that they cause substantial morbidity and mortality and have a substantial cost. DOMI helped us to do that and helped us help to focus our attention on, on cholera. Uh, CHOVI, um, which again, Bangladesh was very important in, in um, the approval of the first oral cholera vaccine, um, really established the benefit of vaccination against cholera in the prevention of cholera disease. And then with technology transfer of that oral cholera vaccine to Incepta, the third component of this uh, was complete. That is bringing new tech innovative technology to a company that hadn't had a, an approved vaccine before, now Incepta is able to participate not only in the manufacture of oral cholera vaccine, but now hopefully with IVI, partner together to develop and deploy uh, successful COVID vaccines. So it's really been my privilege then uh, to go through all the work that we've done together and, and to think about together all the things that we can do in the future. And this could involve new vaccines for global health, new projects looking at, at special partnerships with ICDDRB or other institutions in Bangladesh to really advance sustainable global health, 
to reduce the burden of infectious diseases through vaccination. Thank you. Thank you, Director General Zerum Kim, for such a, spend, such a splendid presentation in such a short duration. So uh, now we would like to take a sh small group photo. So I would like to request uh, Zerum to accompany uh, Honorable Abid Islam Ma'am to stand in front of the screen. And also I would like to request uh, our Honorable guests who are attended in the Zoom, please look at the screen so that we can take the photo correctly. Thank you. At this time, we would like to invite our attending guests to exit the auditorium and follow us for the flag raising ceremony. For our guests watching remotely, please stay tuned for live coverage of the flag raising ceremony. The flag of the People's Republic of Bangladesh will now be raised while the national anthem is played. like to request you all to move towards the flag of South Korea.
concludes the flag raising ceremony. For our guest watching remotely, this concludes the live coverage of the ceremony to celebrate ratification of the IVI establishment agreement by the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe. Uh, now we all will take a group photo in front of the flag of Bangladesh. Let's move towards the flag of Bangladesh. Yeah, there.